Okay, we've discussed sampling. We've discussed uh, conversion from samples back to uh, continuous signals, or as we call it, discrete or continuous to discrete conversion, or digital to analog conversion, which is more common usage. Now we're going to talk about resampling. Now resampling is very common, and we can also use resampling as a um, way to explore. Uh, the principles of, of digital to analog conversion, analog to digital conversion, sampling in general. So the first type we're going to explore is called upsampling. So we'll go with our spectral signature. That looks like so. And we're going to assume that it's zero at some point uh, above omega c which is less than pi okay. so this is the DTFT of x so to do resampling and in this particular case upsampling we'll put x of n into up sampler and a low pass filter. We'll describe the characteristics of that low pass filter in just a moment. So what's going on here? First is this step. Here, everything here by the way is digital. Uh, yes, everything is sampled. So here what we're going to do is add L minus one zeros between each sample. Then we'll put it through a low pass filter and away we'll go. So what happens when we do this? Well, I'll first show graphically and then we'll discuss it just a little bit more. Essentially, we start out with our original spectrum, and now we create virtual copies. But actually, they're not so virtual, they are very much real copies. And if you were to listen to this signal, take this signal and put it out to uh, a digital to analog converter and put it into your headphones, it would definitely sound different. What would it sound like? Well, in practice, it would just sound very rough. And then we're going to put it through a low pass filter up above. It gets rid of each of these copies. So these copies are reproduced because pi is now out here instead of where it used to be. When we're all done, we have a signal like we did before, except that now, instead of pi being uh, real close to the edge, we have pi out here, and we have a lot of free empty space where there's no signal. Okay, so let's look and see why this is the case. Let's first define a signal somewhere in the middle of this path as uh, x of e. So, defining how x of e is a little bit tricky uh, if you think of starting from x of n Let's start here and just say x of e of n is equal to, it's mostly zeros, and there'll just be a few places where it's not zero. And we know how to do a signal like that. Uh, we use delta functions. So take a moment to look at this and convince yourself that this will give us exactly what we want. When n is equal to zero, 
then uh, k equals 0 will give us x of 0, our original one. When n is equal to 1, then um, this delta function will only be um, non-zero when we have uh, a zero in the argument. And 1 minus kL, where k is an integer and l is an integer, larger than 1, is never going to be uh, non-zero, or never going to be zero. So this will evaluate to zero and so on and so forth until n is equal to l. At that point, we'll get our next sample of, of our original x. So that'll give us what we want. So what does the frequency domain version of this look like? We have x e j omega is equal to, and let me give myself some more room here, x e j omega is going to be the sum over n of x of n, which we have up there, the sum over k, x k delta n minus k l times e negative j omega n. Well, whenever we run into something like this, we know exactly what to do. We swap the order. That gives us k times the summation. Oh, and we can pull our x of k out. Let's do it now. xk times the summation over n delta n minus kl e to negative j omega n, which is just the Fourier transform of a shifted delta. So this is now going to be e to the negative j omega lk. And then the outer sum is simply the Fourier transform except with omega l. So that's going to give us x e, no, I'm sorry, that should have been e up there to the j omega l. So what does that do? Well, that means that the argument here grows faster than the frequency does. So as we move between 0 and pi in frequency, we're actually evaluating x, the uh, um, DTFT, at much higher frequencies. So we're capturing, in essence, all the copies that used to be higher in frequency than pi. And now we've got them down below, which is going to give us this scenario that we started with and observed right up there. OK, so that's upsampling. Next, we have downsampling. What goes up must come down. So with downsampling, uh, we start by, uh, well, we're going to lower the sample rate. This is going to lead to problems if we have sampled just barely at the Nyquist rate, because our new sampling rate will be below the Nyquist rate, and we're going to have problems. So there are two steps in downsampling. One of them is filtering, and the other is decimating. So let's talk about decimating first. Decimating is throwing away samples. So if we're going to decimate by a factor of 4, that means we keep one sample out of every four. And so a decimator looks like it has a down arrow and then the factor and it comes out. So what would come out if we had x of n going into this thing? A 
let's put it over here. This would give us x of 0. And then the next one that came out would be x of m. And then we skip a bunch more, and so we get x of 2m, and x of 3m, and so on and so forth. So the output, I'll just call it x of d of n, will be x of n times m. That's it. So this, as you can imagine, has a profound effect on the spectrum. And what it will do is essentially um, cause all of our virtual copies to now squeeze down on top of each other. So if we started out with something that looked like this, and then every 2 pi, we would have yet another copy. These copies are going to move towards each other. And the resulting one, which I'll put in red because it's a bloodbath, might look like this. So this area in here is where we've uh, where we have aliasing, where the uh, two spectra have mixed. So that's the effect of uh, decimation. Because of that, for downsampling, we put first a low pass filter, followed by our decimator. And the impact of this, let's see, the cutoff is pi over m. So the impact of this is to take our signal. truncate anything that would be aliased after the downsampling. And then the, the uh, spectrum at the output is going to look like row housing. Where we have done our low pass filtering just perfectly so that we have no aliasing and everything uh, pounces right on top of each other. Should note that um, what used to be um, pi over m after the downsampling becomes pi. So that would be 3 pi. And at this point we'd have 2 pi. Be minus 3 pi. And so on. 